Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be reviewing Fire in the Valley by Michael Swain and Paul Freeberger. I'll talk very briefly about the authors, go into an overview about what the book is about, talk about what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, who I'd recommend the book to, and finish off with what I'll be reading for next time. Uh, Freeberger and Swain both co-wrote wrote this book. I believe Freeberger was a journalist with NPR and I believe the San Jose News at the time uh, of this and was essentially a reporter. Michael Swain, as best as I understand, was a an editor at a magazine called Dr. Dobbs, which was one of the leading hobbyist magazines of the what they called microcomputing uh, world. But what the book is about is really the 10-year period between the introduction of the first personal computer to really when the industry became mainstream, where everybody knew what a computer was, and it really entered in the public consciousness in a way that it really was limited to hobbyists before that. So that's the book in a nutshell, and they, the two authors interview hundreds and hundreds of people, and you really see what the world was like and how the hobbyist movement of what they called microcomputing, uh, so kind of the evolution of these mainframe computers to a computer that can sit on your desk, and they interview people who wrote magazines, people who were hobbyists who had essentially uh, expositions, people who uh, were coders, programmers, uh, people who designed their own computers, just kind of everybody, the early successes like the Altair, which kind of quickly faded for, into obscurity, as well as some other companies that also kind of came out with their own personal computers and for a variety of reasons failed. You have the rise of Apple computers towards the later half of the book, and then you have Bill Gates uh, and Microsoft when they were able to make a deal with IBM to put an operating system they had bought, MS-DOS, on the I IBM PC, which was IBM's first personal computer. So it's a very detailed history. I thought that it was the best thing about the book to me is kind of the atmosphere of what the world was like then. You really see Silicon Valley as the center of the universe. There are other areas of the country where microcomputing was a thing. In Boston and Atlanta, they had kind of micro scenes, uh, but really the bulk of the book is written from the perspective of Silicon Valley being kind of the center of the universe which makes sense because you have the silicon manufacturing there as well as Hewlett Packard and uh, other other companies, other major companies in the area who were kind of all on the sidelines in some ways for this, Xerox, T Texas Instruments, IBM. Um, and then the book really pretty thoroughly discusses who all the folks were from, again, the hobbyists, people who just did this for fun to see how far the computer could go uh, to people who were looking to really make a business out of it. And so you kind of get everybody. And I thought that that was the best point of the book. I thought that he has a little business case towards the end, or kind of a mini business case of why certain companies failed and why the big, comp the big question in the whole kind of hobbyist movement was, well, when is IBM going to enter this? And IBM's entry into the, the, the marketplace was really the stamp of approval. And so these companies that had kind of came before were in some ways testing the waters. Some of them succeeded, like Apple. Most of them failed. But um, he goes into the reasons why they failed, why IBM would have waited on the sidelines, why Xerox would have waited on the sidelines. So I thought that was interesting. I think from the, the, the negative perspective, um, he interviews a ton of people. There are are probably five, four or five or six magazines that are hobbyist magazines. Sitting in the year 2021 when I read this book, I personally felt that that was excessive. I think he goes to great lengths to interview everybody who was ever involved in this. And I think he kind of, from a historical sp perspective, it's nice that he's tracking all these iterative steps. I don't know if we needed to see how the first word processor was, was programmed. I don't know if we need to spend three or four pages on that. I don't know if we need to spend three or four pages on this magazine that's very similar to these other two magazines. So I think it's thoroughness, while I appreciate it, I think it definitely made the book less enjoyable reading experience from that perspective. Um, the writing itself is not always the best. It's sometimes unclear and it's sometimes dry. Uh, but if you're someone who wants to know what the world was like at the time of kind of these, when these machines first came out and how different it was than today, I think it's a great historical piece. He really does 
get you up to speed if you're not of a, it has a good job of writing something that's not, you don't need to have technical knowledge to really understand it. He does a really good job of giving a very, very brief history up to 1975. So from the beginning of Charles Babbage and his ideas with computations all the way up to really the, the, the computer, the microcomputer, and then the personal computer. So that's Fire in the Valley. This is the first edition that I reviewed. My understanding is there is a second and third edition of the book, and there was a movie made of the book in the late 90s that's much more of a Steve Jobs versus Bill Gates. Both of those characters are in this book, but I think the bulk of that movie is based on the second edition of the book, which I did not read. So if you're really interested based on the movie, make sure not to get the first edition, get maybe the second or the third edition, because my understanding it's been updated to include more recent material. So that's Fire in the Valley, and uh, I recommend it to anybody who's interested in kind of uh, what the world was like at the beginning of the birthplace of personal computers. You kind of get a sense of how the business model has changed over time and how just kind of a strange world it really was and how organic it was. So that's Fire in the Valley. Next time I'm not sure exactly what I'll be reading, but please feel free to uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, and I'll have my Twitter information below if you want to follow me on Twitter. Until next time, bye.